as you start uh, your new business or as you uh, try to grow your existing business, uh, ask yourself the question, is your money leaking? Is your business leaking money? And uh, I was reading an interesting blog that I wanted to share with you about five holes uh, to plug if your business is, in fact, leaking money. And as we, we talk about this, think about uh, these things as you're starting a business so you don't make the mistakes that existing businesses are making. Uh, you don't make them uh, uh, from the very beginning. Uh, this was a blog I found uh, in entrepreneur.com. Uh, Entrepreneur Magazine is a great uh, publication, and if you own a business or you are starting a business, I highly uh, recommend reading Entrepreneur Magazine. I've been reading it for years, and uh, every every day, every every month, uh, I, I get good information uh, uh, from every edition that I read. And something I, I haven't done any research on it, but something is going on with uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. My last, uh, well, I, I used to do something uh, the first of every month. I would go into my uh, neighborhood bookstore, big one, and I would uh, go to the business magazine section, and I would see what was going to catch my eye and articles I needed to read, uh, whatever. The last two times, the last two months that I have been uh, doing that, I have not found Entrepreneur Magazine on the shelves. And they not only do they do a, a monthly magazine, they come out with uh, quarterly specials about starting a business. I shared, I've shared many articles with you. Matter of fact, uh, I'm preparing right now uh, a. a um, a YouTube on, uh, on on Entrepreneur Magazine and the great information I've gotten from it. But uh, I asked the uh, uh, manager of the store, I said, uh, is something going on with Ent Entrepreneur Magazine? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not seeing it uh, on your shelf. I wasn't seeing it on your competitor's shelf last month. And he went to his computer and uh, found out that uh, they are not he has not actually received Entrepreneur Magazine for his shelves. And the interesting thing was, uh, just two days before that, uh, one of the little girls from the neighborhood was uh, selling subscriptions to magazines uh, as a fundraiser for her school. And I was looking down the list of magazines that she bought uh, or was offering, and Entrepreneur Magazine was there. So I actually said, well, geez, I, I, I buy it every month. I should have a subscription to save myself some money, uh, so I, I signed up for two years, uh, a two-year subscription to the magazine, and lo and behold, the next day I went and it wasn't even on the shelf. So I, something's going on, but uh, regardless, it's a great magazine. Subscribe to it or go to entrepreneur.com and sign up for their uh, newsletters. Anything you can sign up for because it's all great information. But this current story was published um, two days ago. Yes. Uh, and the author is Catherine Clifford. Your business leaking money pipe holes to plug. Entrepreneurs can be so enthusiastic about sailing toward the goal in front of them that they forget to take the time to make sure their ship isn't leaking. Pausing for a moment on that, on that opening statement, uh, that is ever so true, and, and uh, I have found over the years that the one thing that 99% of the entrepreneurs that I know, the small business owners that I know, make the same mistake, and it kind of relates to your business leaking money, the mistake of not exploring resources to help your business run more efficiently. And so it was has always been one of my goals and objectives as I do the things that I do is to help you find those resources. If you're not going to take the time, at least let me tell you where 
uh, to find them. Let me tell you where to go to find them. And so entrepreneur, entrepreneur.com uh, obviously is one of those uh, one of those areas, one of those magazines. It's worth taking the time to check your halls and see if you aren't missing an opportunity to save money. Every six months, Catherine says, small business owners should do a review of their business plan, holding in, looking in every nook and cranny for hidden savings, said Deborah Sweeney, who is the chief executive of the on doc, online document filing service, My Corporation. Twice a year, she has her top managers each come up with two ideas for cost cutting, as well as two ideas for revenue generation. I have a book someplace. It's an old book. There it is. Save Your Business a Bundle. Daniel Kerr is the author of the book. It's an old book. I'm going to pull that out after reading this, and uh, I'm going to share with you some of his uh, cost-saving ideas. But uh, three belt tightening mistakes to avoid. If you are, if you are going to negotiate rates with service providers, it can be tempting to put down an ultimatum. Give me better rates, or I will hit the highway. But often that side of tone, that sort of tone, will be met with resistance. Uh, says Sweeney. She recommends being team oriented to get more productive results. Rather than come out with the, this negative approach, look at all the great things uh, we are doing as a team. So here's Sweeney's list of the five hottest areas for cost cutting. Shipping. Oh boy. I don't do very much shipping. Uh, I never have uh, over the years just by the nature of my business. Uh, I mail, which is a form of shipping. So I know how I, I know the efficiencies of of uh, mailing. As a matter of fact, uh, in the 80s, I spent most of my time as a small business owner in the world of mail, direct mail, direct response. Uh, but I've never been a, a, a shipper of much, and in the few times that I've had to ship. Um, well, I, uh, about four months ago, maybe five months ago, I bought 22 computers on eBay. Uh, first time I had ever been on eBay in my life, I go and I buy uh, 22 computers. And I, I knew that I was buying um, uh, Basically, uh, the, not even all the guts of the computer. I was buying some very, very basic things, and I would have to uh, provide RAM, some additional hard drive uh, to, to make them operable. And it was coming from a reputable company. Actually, the, the company was uh, just up the road, maybe a two-and-a-half-hour drive from me uh, in Cincinnati, from Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, I even consider because I had to get my objective was to get those 22 computers either here in my home or shipped out to California, and we would build a cloud. We we build a cloud of 22 computers either here in Cincinnati, maybe in my basement. I don't know. I don't think Miss Nettie though allow me to have any more computers down there. Uh, or uh, send them out to California. So I spent a lot of time uh, figuring out how I was going to ship them uh, because 22 computers cost uh, a lot of money. Just, just think of, well, uh, the greatest example of shipping and shipping costs, Amazon.com. They are doing something very, very daunting right now uh, because of the volume of merchandise sold, their sales. They are actually opening up distribution facilities around the country so that sh they will cut their cost of shipping. Now, when we talk about somebody like Amazon.com, obviously we're, we're talking about uh, a shipping bill that millions of dollars probably every day of shipping. So 
especially if you are a really tall business that does a lot of shipping, you may be able to negotiate your shipping rates with FedEx or UPS for a lower rate. Generally, as the volume of goods that you ship increases, you gain leverage to bargain for a lower rate. That makes sense. Another area, credit card processing. Taking a close look at how much you are paying for your customer's credit cards to be processed each month is often worthwhile. Well, when you're just launching a business for the first time, it's very likely that you do not know how much is too much to pay. You won't know how much is too much to pay until you do it. Uh, I made a decision. Let me talk about this for a moment because I made what I thought was a good decision about credit card processing uh, ended up being a bad decision. Uh, I made a decision uh, for a credit card processor uh, with a company called the Elevon. Elevon was owned by uh, a large, large bank, one of the top ten largest banks in the country called the U.S. Bank. Uh, actually, uh, they started here in Cincinnati. Uh, I know a lot of folks at U.S. Bank. I was a good customer of U.S. Bank, not anymore. Um, they did two things uh, to do uh, harm to my small business. Uh, number one, a, a senior executive here in Cincinnati made this, uh, sent me an email one time uh, when I inquired about doing some business. Uh, came back with the statement, uh, you are too small. We don't do business with, with one people operations. And boy, I was taken back by that. Here I was a small business owner, had all the money that I had in their bank, and here they were making this comment to me, which really uh, did not sit with me very well. Uh, so that started to think, well, geez, how concerned are you about small business, one? Number two, obviously you don't think too much of me as an individual. And I, I knew that that was a bad decision on their part when I got that. I sent an email back to that individual saying, okay, <laughs> you put me up against the largest marketing services company that you have. They can have a thousand employees. I don't care how many. And we'll set some goals, some specific goals and objectives uh, and see who can achieve those most efficiently for you and make you money. Well, I never got an answer from that bank. The next bad decision they made for me, I had uh, chosen uh, their company, Elevon, to process uh, credit cards for me. And quite honestly, for the first year and a half that I was paying a monthly fee to them, we processed very, very few orders, if any. But I wanted to have that decision in place because I knew that someday I'd be processing a lot of credit card business. So I contracted with them and I went to, we were getting ready to launch uh, one aspect of the business and uh, before we actually did I wanted to process an order. Uh, I wanted to place an order myself, make, making sure how, how watching it go through the system uh, then making sure that the end result was the, the processed order and the revenue uh, finally got into my account on a timely basis. So I processed the order and lo and behold, my order wouldn't go through. I said, what is going on? So I called up the credit card processor, LMI, I said, what is, what's going on? I can't process my own order and I'm using a credit card from your bank. What is, what's going on here? Well, a gentleman got on the phone with me and said, we decided not to do business with you anymore. I said, oh, well, how come you never told me you didn't decide? That's okay that you not decide not to do business with me. That's certainly your choice. Uh, why didn't you tell me about that? And he didn't give me much of an answer at all, so it was at that point that I uh, severed all relationships uh, and, uh, with, uh, with the U.S. Bank. But we, we, we started on this about credit card processing. It, it's, it's, it's a very important aspect 
to your business if you're selling something. Uh, so it's an important decision that you make. So today, uh, I had to put something quickly in place. We put uh, PayPal in place. PayPal is uh, becoming known, but PayPal is known to be one of the more expensive processes, but it was something I could do pretty quickly, and which I had to do. I was, I was forced to make that quick decision. Uh, and uh, also, we were supposed to have uh, Google Wallet in place. I don't know, quite honestly, if we do. I'll have to check that out. But credit card processing. And uh, if you're interested, there's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share with you in the future five questions you must ask your credit card processor. Number three, insurance costs. From business insurance to health insurance for you and your employees, it's important to review what you are spending on insurance to see whether you are paying it's appropriate and to be sure you're still buying the right kinds of insurance. That, my friends, is huge because most businesses not only might be making the wrong decisions about buying business insurance, they don't even have business insurance in the, in the first place to protect all the assets of their business. Uh, we know that and we've studied that and we will uh, share more information with you about that. But we know how so very important health care insurance is. And in the year 2014, if your company employs more than 50 people, you will be mandated to provide health insurance for those folks or you will get penalized for not doing so. Crazy thing about it is we don't know what that mandated insurance is going to be less than two years from now. So subsequently, we don't know the cost of what that insurance is going to be, but when it's mandated, it's higher cost. I can tell you that right out of the bat, right off the bat. I was studying health insurance uh, very, very closely up until three years ago. I stopped studying it very closely, and now I look at the big picture. Uh, I don't study it uh, on a line-by-line -line basis, if you will. Uh, the other, um, uh, the other point is that we don't know what that penalty is going to be. It would be interesting if the penalty is going to be less uh, to the employer than the cost of the providing insurance. There are solutions to this mess. I don't think, quite honestly, we're going in the right direction, but I think one thing for sure, particularly if you're starting a business, look into health savings accounts. I started a health savings account three years ago, and I put into that account the maximum amount of money that I can. I put it into that account tax-free, and, and as long as I use it for health reasons, and they're, very, they're, they're defined reasons, you just can't make up something, they're defined reasons. It never gets taxed, number one. Number two, if there's any money left in that account uh, when I uh, pass away, although I spend my health insurance expenses are, or my health expenses are huge, uh, it will pass on to my estate, uh, and my sons will never have to pay taxes on that as long as they use it for health insurance reasons that are defined. HSAs, health savings accounts. Uh, go to a website, I think it's still this, I haven't been there in a long time, hsa.com or Google health savings accounts or Google HSAs. Uh, you will get all the information you need, but please do it. Overstaffing. While it can be one of the toughest areas of your business to consider trimming, it can also be one of the most important, particularly in small business, where each employee is so critical to the uh, performance of the whole operation. Sometimes you're overstaffed and you don't realize it, so you are spending the money uh, for those employees, but unfortunately, so many folks found out in the last five years, four years, three years, as they laid folks off in their business, they found new efficiencies and new productivities in those employees that stayed. So 
they never hired back. That was good for the business because it created a more efficient uh, position for the business. It was bad for those folks who lost their jobs. So great for folks who want to start a business. It all ties together. Now is the best time ever that I've seen in the last 40 years to start a business. And finally, marketing costs. Make sure you're really getting a measurable return on your marketing investments. It can be easy to find yourself throwing money away at the same marketing strategy month after month rather than thinking critically and creatively about how to attract new customers. That is at the heart of what we do here in davidsbar.com. Uh, I have spent 40 year, over 40 years in marketing and sales. So the technology that we have developed, our social marketing, social network technology is the most efficient means that we have found to market the message using today's technology. Simple. We are doing in our community. We are just sharing that experience with you. And I will guarantee you, personally guarantee you, that an investment in our social marketing, social network technology will return on your investment. It's doing it for me. There's no reason why it can't do it for you. Just do what I do from a process system basis. Just do what I do. Now, you have to obviously have your own uh, intellectual property, your own product and service, but that's you. That's you and your brand, you and your business. But I have yet to find a business application that will not work with our social marketing, social network technology. Please don't make the five mistakes uh, that we have just shared with you uh, because your business will leak money. And when your business leaks money, hopefully it's a small leak, but small leaks have a tendency to turn into larger leaks and create real problems. Just take time to step back and look to see what you're doing and making sure that you're making the best money decisions for your small business. Uh, and certainly as you start a business, now is the time to start making the best decisions.